Hey everybody, I'm excited to show you Einstein Copilot for Tableau. Yes, generative AI inside web authoring. I think you're going to be really impressed. So we're going to show how Copilot works and how you get the best out of it. I'm also going to show you that Copilot can sometimes struggle. Because yes, this is a brand new product. It's generative AI inside Tableau. And like all generative AI, sometimes it struggles to get the human's intent correctly. I want to show you what to do when that happens and importantly, how you can give us feedback so that we can work with you and build that trusted relationship to continue improving Einstein Copilot over time. So, sounds good, let's get started. I've got FAA wildlife strike data. Basically, it shows the number of wildlife strikes reported by pilots across the US since 1990. You can see reports have been going up. Let's click on a new sheet and get started with Copilot. The first thing we see is a little icon. It says, if you don't know where to start, let's use generative AI to explore our data. So all we need to do is click on Einstein and we get a little disclaimer saying, be careful with Gen AI. We click got it and we're ready to go. So the first thing Einstein does is look at the metadata, the data itself and the field names to gather, gather its starting information for what it's looking at. And then the best thing to do is to click suggest questions to kickstart your analysis. How has the total cost of wildlife changed over time? What's the relationship uh, between phase and level of damage? Or compare fatalities and injuries. If we don't like these questions, we can just press the refresh button and get three more. I mean, I think they're all pretty useful questions. Uh, what about the total cost, airline types, time of day? Well, how does the time of day affect the number of wildlife strikes reported? Are most wildlife strikes in the morning, the afternoon or the evening? I literally don't know. Well, here is insight. Most <laughs> most common pilots don't actually tell us the time of the day, and most of them happen at daytime. Right, okay. So that's all right. I like that. It, Einstein tells me what it's want, but I actually want to explore, um, show me the, whoa, let's turn, show me the number of incidents by species. I want to know what wildlife actually is reported to hit planes the most. So we started with time of day, that's useful, but uh, I'm actually going to go down a path that interests me. Notice how I uh, actually typed shoe me, which makes no sense, but uh, Copilot is fine. I'm going to sort this uh, sort, sort this chart. I want this sorted in descending order. If you know Tableau, like I do, I've been using it for 17 years, you know, I know I could do this with a single click, right? But... The point being, Copilot is something that uh, might be used by people newer to Tableau. So this is a really nice, natural way for them to interact. And guess what? Unknown birds are the most common things to hit um, planes, uh, small and medium. You know, pilots, when they hit planes, I suspect aren't getting their binoculars out and their ornithology books. They're just like, we hit birds. But then you get doves, killdeers, swallows, kestrels, etc. So that's insight. What about the impact that these birds have on the planes themselves. Uh, let's have a look at show total cost. Because I've got total cost as a field in the data set. Well, hello, it's future Andy here. I just wanted to talk about that calculation. How did I create it? Well, Einstein Copilot can also create calculations. Let's ask for a calculation adding together all inflation adjusted costs. I've got uh, a couple of costs there are several cost fields here. Some are inflation adjusted and some aren't. I want it to sum the total of uh, repairs and other costs according to the inflation adjusted. And it's done it. Uh, what I really like about this is it's actually done a calculation better than I probably would have done it because it's created a zero null for each of the sums. So it's taken the correct cost fields and it's put first returned a zero if the value is null and summed that. To, summed that. So you'll never get a null when you're expecting a zero. So that's how you create the calculation. Copilot even gives you a nice, useful field name. So that's calculations, also in Einstein Copilot. Cool. Back to previous handy. And now let's see if we can add this to the data set. And in this case, this is great. Now we've changed. We've got total cost uh, in columns. It's been replaced. But actually, I want to see incidents uh, to the chart as well. What I want is a side-by-side -side bar chart. This chart is cool. But, but, uh, let's talk a little bit about Canadian geese as 
relative to cost and incidence. So now I've asked Copilot to add that field to me. Again, I know I could drag and drop that, but people new to Tableau might not be able, might not have that knowledge. So we can now see that Canadian geese cost a lot, have cost a lot over time, even though there's a very infrequent amount of time they actually hit planes relative to say to morning doves, they hit a lot of planes, but don't cause too much cost. So far I've given Copilot just some basic instructions, but now let's ask it something complicated. How have these Canadian geese impacted cost and incidence over time? So I'm gonna say, can you show cost of incidence over time, but only include incidents where species is Canada goose. So what I'm looking for here is the timeline of incidents with the Canadian goose. And here I've put in a long verbose prompt, right? And that's something else Copilot, uh, Copilot can do. And in fact, it's done it. It's created this filter with just the Canadian geese. And look at this insight. There was something expensive in 95. There was something expensive in 2021. But there was something incredibly expensive in 2009. Let's see what insights we can find out about these Canadian geese uh, and the peaks. Um, so one thing we could do is add phase of flight to the view. Phase of flight is one of the fields. Uh, let's put it on the color shelf. One of the things you can do with Einstein Copilot is be really quite explicit about where you want fields to go, which is useful for people who know where things want to go. Uh, but if you don't, you just ask the question and Copilot will do its best and mostly get things right. Uh, so here we go. Looks like most of these things, uh, most of these incidences took place on the climb. Certainly the one in 2009 was in the climb phase. Well, the next thing I want to do is ask a vague question. I want to know which flights caused these problems. So I'm going to say which flights caused the spike in goose incidents in 2009? This is a really open-ended question. In the end, I guess I want a bar chart showing the flights, but how is Copilot supposed to know to go from this line chart to that answer? Well, let's find out. And it's done a whole bunch of things. So to identify which contributed the spike, I've put a focus on flight number and incidents as a measure. I filtered to only Canadian geese and in 2009, which we can validate by looking at the filter and the change helps pinpoint specific flights. So this is, I, this is it, this, I'm impressed. It's not actually answered my question, right? Because I want to know the cost, uh, replace incidents with cost so that I can see which was the expensive flight in this phase. But it has done a huge amount. It's kept the geese, it's filtered down to the day try one, and it's put the flight number on the side. So this is an example where Copilot's really doing a pretty good job, but you still need the human in the loop. And here you are. Some of you will have been ahead of me already. What was the flight in 2009 that caused a huge cost? It was flight 1549. And if we add remarks to the tooltip, we can hover over and see what happened. Yes, this was flight 1549, which took off from LaGuardia Airport in the morning uh, in 2009, hit a flock of geese, took out the engines, and Captain Sully amazingly landed that plane on the Hudson River. Nobody died, but it did cost almost $50 million. So this is the real power of Copilot. I've shown you the basic questions, you can get started with suggested questions and then ask questions that are complex, short, or even verbose to get Copilot to show uh, insights to your data. So that's Einstein Copilot doing all the stuff brilliantly well. You may have guessed I was following a script there because I know what it's going to do with those questions. And believe me, the majority of your interactions are going to be like that. Start with suggested questions and then incrementally build using different types of prompts to get what you want. You will always have a sense of forward motion. But let's be honest, Copilot might struggle sometimes. You might ask a question that seems obvious and get a really weird visualization or it just does the wrong thing, something really unexpected. What do we do in that case? Let's find out. 
I asked uh, Einstein to draw a picture of the number of incidents over time. And it's a really interesting line chart. You can see reported incidents went up and up and up. There was a drop as flights uh, stopped during COVID. But then what happened in 2024? Did, did, did we just not have any incidents? Well, no. I'm recording this halfway through 2024. There just aren't as many incidents. So in order to get a really good picture, I just want to show complete years. So I might ask, exclude 2024. Now, if you know Tableau intimately, you could just right click and exclude that mark itself. But you might just want to be interacting in the flow in Copilot. And then you might get something like this. So what's happened? It says, I've updated the visualization to exclude data from the year 2024. And I seem to only have one mark and it's for 2023. Where's the rest of the years gone? Well, in this case, what happens when, uh, when Tableau does things wrong? Okay, well, Copilot gets it wrong. Well, the first thing you can do is we have moved forwards in terms of items on the visualization. We have a new filter pill or a new pill on the filter shelf. If you are new to Tableau, just iterate, explore, right click, right click on uh, the pill and edit the thing that it's added. Right there, you'll discover that what Copilot has done is actually add a relative date filter to show the previous year. So it's showing the previous year. So in fact, it's actually excluded this year and every other year prior to last year, which isn't what we wanted. What we can do is change to an ending date and say, show me, only show me everything where the end date was uh, 31st of December, 2023. Click OK. And now we've removed uh, the data correctly. So that's one way of doing it is explore, see how these filters are built. You can right click on these filters as well to do the same edit filter option. Oops. Um, the other thing you can do is try and recreate it again. So that I'm going to go back, I'm going to recreate the original chart without the filter. And then just type it again. Give it a second chance. Sometimes it will get the right answer, sometimes it won't. In this case, it's done a filter somewhat differently. And in this case, I can just drag that selection filter, so it's chosen uh, relative dates, and I can just get go down and choose to the end of uh, 2023, or uh, we'll get that accurately, and we can get that correct. Let's go to December the 31st. So you can ask Copilot to give it another go. You know, I really recommend that, uh, having that go. And then, you know what, if things just don't work out, or if they do, the most important call to action I can implore you to do is to tell us what goes right and wrong. So in this case, I'm going to give a down vote on this and say it was inaccurate. Uh, it shows the incorrect uh, year filter type. Uh, it was a relative filter instead of uh, uh, it was. A, I can't remember what the name for the other one is. It was a relative filter. We get the uh, instance of what you were trying to do with the data. We get this information and we understand that that was a non-positive interaction. Don't just give us negative feedback, but please do give us the negative feedback. We want to build and work, build your trust by showing we're working to uh, continually improve Einstein month on month, year on year. The other thing you should be doing is where things are good. Let us know, right? Um, in the, you know, in that case, I can provide official feedback. When Copilot does something that was cool, tell us. So there you have it. That's Einstein Copilot for Tableau. I'm really excited to see how you will use it. I am confident you are going to get loads of positive experiences from it. Especially if you're new to Tableau, it's going to help move you forwards around iterations. That's just that suggested question moment is really powerful. I don't know what to do with this data set. Get Einstein to provide the first view for you. And yes, sometimes Einstein might do things where you're like, what are you thinking? You seem to be struggling. If that's the case, try again. Look at what it did and right click and explore. Always right click and explore in Tableau. That's just incredible beginner level uh, knowledge to work out what's going on. And do give us feedback. Hit that thumb up or hit that thumb down so we know how it's working for you. Don't just get frustrated. Pass the information back to us so we can help Einstein Copilot get better week on week, week on week, month on month, year on year. Take care.